Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel, Dota of Increase. My name is Nathan East, for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video. And I am the founder and CEO of Dota of Increase Ministries, that is DOI Ministries. And here on this channel, I help you guys to increase in your faith and relationship with God and Christ through Bible studies, book reviews, discussions, and more. And I do that by posting twice a week, every Wednesday and Saturday, and every other week on Tuesday. And so, as the title says above, this is actually a book tag and I'm so excited to do this I am not new to book tags I did a few here on the channel already which I probably will remake those but um, if you guys don't know I do have a booktube channel where I talk about all the other books that I read um, but I wanted to pretty much incorporate those tags and challenges here on this side of YouTube and so I am going to be doing that and I actually saw the tag from Chrissy's Purple Library I watched her video specifically and um, so I'm using her as a person that I'll be following up on and so the idea behind the telephone book tag is that basically if someone tags you or if you watch a video and you want to do the tag you basically use their last book to be something that you pick for your first book so you're picking elements off of the book covers to basically move on with the books and I believe you have to have 10 books total and so I do have 10 books here all of these books I have read most of these have gotten a five stars from me and so yeah we're gonna jump right into this video and so the last book that Chrissy had was this book here it's called Sandstorm by James Rollins and as you can see there is a lot of orange on the cover I could go with the font style the font color I could go with sand obviously or storm but if you guys can see in the sky there is some lightning going on and so I'm going to pick a lightning out of that book for mine and my book is actually going to be Ted Decker's skin and as you can see there is lightning right here in the center um, and all through the cover and so yes Ted Decker's skin and so this is a book I actually enjoyed however however I have my gripes okay I feel like if they could omit like the last two chapters this book will be a five stars but because that last the last two or three chapters I can't remember how many chapters it was but the last couple of chapters made this such a bad book for me like oh I mean it was like a four stars if I'm not mistaken all my ratings if I don't say them right will be on the screen but it wasn't that great of a rating because of the ending and the ending of this made me it just wasn't realistic in a sense at all it just it's it was like a suspension of you know belief that needed to happen and I just wasn't there for it I wasn't there for it at all the story itself was amazing but the ending just no and then even on top of that ending they still had me confused with some things that were still left unsaid it was like a cliffhanger after a cliffhanger I didn't understand it but um basically this is if you guys don't know it is sort of a thriller kind of I would almost say a a horror as well but thriller um christian of course these books are all christian based and ted decker wrote this and it is basically about recovering cult member wendy davidson who is on her way to reconcile with her mother in the town of somerville when she gets caught in the midst of a terrible storm three freak tornadoes have already hit but beyond their threat lies an even more ominous danger a vindictive serial killer known as red who has left a trail of victims in his wake what Wendy doesn't know is that there is an enigma surrounding Red and that the FBI is closely guarding revealing troops about Somerville. These secrets have the potential to destroy much more than one small community. When Wendy finds herself in the tempest of the storm among four strangers, the next victim, or the killer himself, could be closer than she thinks. And so, yeah, I enjoyed Wendy. I enjoyed, honestly, all the characters were quite interesting. Red themselves kind of annoyed me, but... um. I kind of liked the reveal of Red and who Red was, but I didn't like the reveal of the entire story as a whole. And I can't give more than that because I feel like if I give too much, it spoils the entire story. And I promise you, if someone would have spoiled this for me by me knowing the ending of this book, I'd have just trashed it. I'm, I'm going to just say that now. Ted Decker definitely is an author that I find that I love his writing, right? I love the writing, the style, the characters, the world. However, sometimes it's just like, bruh. I gotta suspend my belief for some of this stuff and this book right here was one of those books where I was just like mm. now I'm determined to read as many of his books as I can because again I enjoy his thrillers and how it makes you think um about you know faith and things like that but this is my pick and so from this I'm going to be taking obviously Ted Decker's name to show you guys my next book which is going to be another Ted Decker book which is three by him which whew, 
this is a solid five stars for me okay this book i literally threw this book um my spine is a little beat up i threw this book so many times because i was like so frustrated with myself at the end i'm so mad that i did not do a reading vlog when i initially read this book because yeah but i am going to do a reread of this book and record myself reading it to see if i can pick up on the little hints of things that i know now to be true um but yeah so three is more horror than skin was but it's also a thriller um and it's basically about this guy so here we go by all accounts kevin parsons is leading a virtuous life but like all people kevin has his secrets and someone wants them revealed while driving home from graduate school kevin receives a call from a deluded stranger who calls himself slater slater demands that kevin confesses his sin in the next three minutes or the car he's driving will be blown to pieces with the threat he offers a riddle what falls but never breaks what breaks but never falls Thus starts a harrowing chain of threats with progressively higher stakes. Another riddle, another three minutes, confess your sin, Kevin. The problem is Kevin has no idea what sin, and Slater's cycle won't stop until he's dead. Now only Samantha, the woman he once loved more than life itself, can help him uncover the secrets of a mysterious past. But Samantha may soon be dead as well. And let me just say, this book, hell. I, I love the book, reading it, but when I got to the reveal, I was like, oh my gosh. The, the reveal if you read this book and you know what i'm talking about the reveal with slater and samantha oh my gosh I did not expect it did not see it coming um but it made sense and so this is like an example of like ted decker's writing when sometimes it's kind of like unbelievable but it makes sense whereas with skin it was just like i can't believe this at all like I didn't know what he was thinking with that book. That, that book just needed to go. But this one I loved. And so, um, yeah, I definitely would recommend if you're looking for a Christian suspense thriller horror book that um, gives you those faith aspects as well as some mystery with a lot of little creepy bits in there. Definitely this. Don't read this if you're not into, like, killers and, and threat. Just don't. Just don't. Just don't. But, um, yeah. And so, from this book i'm going to take these colors here with like person is and i'm going to go with mark of the raven as you guys can see it's kind of the same color so we're gonna go with mark of the raven by morgan l bussy which is absolutely my favorite my favorite christian fantasy right now I, I don't think i've found another christian fantasy to top this right now um mark of the raven the ravenwood saga trilogy as a whole is like phenomenal phenomenal for me and um yeah so this one follows lady celine as she is the heir of um the house of ravenwood and their family gift is basically dream walking and so dream walking was basically used by her family to pretty much manipulate people to blackmail people and to kill people however lady celine learns the truth about her heritage um about the gift that she was given she learns about the light i believe is what it's called the light and then you have the lady if I'm not mistaken, which would be like the demonic aspect to it. And um, I will say I love the magic system in this book so much. The magic system, the world building, the characters, the relationships, the romances. I swoon for the romance from beginning to end. I'm sorry. Beginning to end. And if you haven't seen, I did do a reading vlog for this trilogy. Um, I think I probably did books two and three on camera. I don't remember if I read book one or not on camera, but I did do... Um, a reading block so i'll leave links either in the cards or down below in the description but five stars all the way through for me and um yeah this one is really really amazing and um i think if you're looking for something that is fantastical right its own world that uses the elements but also has a lot of faith talk this was epic for me this was epic and so moving from this i'm gonna go with how she's standing and my next book is gonna be in the search of a prince by miss tony shiloh and just know i have a reading vlog coming for this and the second book which is to win a prince and so i read this book five saw it read it earlier this year when it came out right in february this book right here you guys i feel like this is what i wish i would have found when it came to reading books as a teenager as a young girl because one is black girl magic all day black girl magic black girl magic i love it the cast black okay the culture black i love it okay and it's not to you know disregard any of the other books i've read i love those however i can relate to this because i'm obviously black um but this right here brielle brielle was the girl okay brielle so let me just tell you what this is about so this is a contemporary romance okay following uh how old is she it doesn't say how old she is but um it follows brielle who's basically a fully um content 
teaching in New York City. So she's teaching in New York City Public Schools, I believe it is. Yeah. And she normally takes um, a summer vacation with her mother. But she finds out the truth concerning her father's side of the family. So she finds out that her grandfather is actually the king of this African coast island. And she is pretty much the only heir. So she has to become the queen, obviously. And so she finds this out. She goes there and like secrets are revealed. Truths are shared. Feelings are had. And um, it is just a whirlwind of things, right? And so you're immersed into this lush, beautiful, colorful African culture, which I'm loving. I'm loving to a T, right? And um, the cast of characters, phenomenal. The way that they were written, so realistic, so relatable. I loved um, the faith. Brielle was always in prayer mode, like prayer mode nonstop. The girl was praying. She had an issue with her mama, she was praying. She had to decide on what she wanted to do about her grandfather, she was praying. She had to find a prince, obviously, she was praying. And the whole point of this is that her grandfather, something happens to him. I'm not going to spoil it, but it pretty much tells you in like the first chapter or so what happens to her grandfather. And he basically says, okay, you have to be the, you, you have to be the queen, you have to take over. Um, however, the people on the island, um, the higher ups, I can't remember what they're called. The council, the royal council, basically tells her that in order for her to take her rightful place as a queen, she has to marry. And so it's in search of a prince. And the romance? I, I swooned. I swooned. I ate it up. I swooned. And I was loving it. And um, it, everything about this book, everything about this book is epic. I will be rereading this and I will do a reading vlog. I wish I would have did the reading vlog when I initially read it. But I'm definitely going to reread this, do a reading vlog on it, and for the sequel because I do have an arc of the sequel and I have two copies of it actually coming in the mail. So I'm so excited for that. And um, yeah, and Such a Prince is amazing. And so from this right here, I'm going to take the trees on the cover up top to go into my next book, which is in the, the I'm sorry, The Heart of a Prince, The Heart of a King. <laughs> by Miss Jo Eileen Smith. You guys see the trees at the bottom. But um this is The Loves of Solomon. So if you read her uh four books that are, are basically on the Loves of Solomon, this is pretty much the revised bind up of it. Um instead of it being four individual books, it's now one whole story, which um I did not read the individual stories. I probably will still read them to compare and see what was taken out, what was added. Um but this I gave about a four, four and a half, maybe a four stars. I can't really remember. You guys see my tabs up and it's it's, it's tabbed to the it's tabbed to the masses, okay? However, I more so enjoyed the female's point of view rather than Solomon, because Solomon just pissed me off. Like Solomon irritated me, okay? For Solomon to be such a wise person and to be so wealthy, he was real dumb when it came to females. I'ma just say that. He was the dumbest of dumb when it came to females okay um he was I, I, he probably was worse than the daddy okay david did some messed up stuff but solomon just was he was gone but um this is basically following the four loves of him who are basically nama who was a desert princess abishag which i do know abishag was the one who took care of his father before his father died um you have sitai which is the, the daughter of a pharaoh and then nikala which i believe is how you say her name um who they consider to be the queen of sheba so you have queen of sheba um you also have B shag and you have two other females and so there's all their stories were interesting um it was intriguing to see how they pretty much worked back in that time with the harem and it's a harem pretty much harem um and seeing their different emotions seeing how they liked solomon seeing how they didn't like solomon seeing how they tried to switch solomon around um to to move him from his faith and things like that was really really interesting i really enjoyed it um i just wanted more I wanted more and I, I wanted Solomon to be less annoying just 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 a little slightly less annoying but um yeah so we have that book and so from moving from this cover what I'm taking from this cover are the two people on the cover the woman and the man and so moving on to the next book I have Harvest of Gold by Miss Tessa Abshaw y'all know I had to have thrown a Tessa Abshaw in here right y'all know number one favorite biblical fiction author top tier for me um I can't have a video about like christian books especially if it's biblical fiction and not include a tessa afshar and i tried not to do like my basic pearl in the sand or anything like that and so i went with the od um harvest of gold this is actually the second and final book in the harvest of rubies duology i believe is what it's called my brain just went left for a second um but it's a duology so this is the second final book so i can't really tell you guys too much about this book but you guys can see the, the two people on the front. This would be Sarah and Darius. And so basically the first book follows a female scribe named Sarah who is the cousin of... Ooh, who was she the cousin of? Nehemiah? 
I think she was a cousin of Nehemiah, um, if you read the first book. Um, and I think I did a reading vlog. If I did, I'll leave links somewhere, either in the cards or down below. If I have reading vlogs for any of these, they'll be posted. But, um, yeah, she's a female scribe, and basically she's tasked with marrying Darius, who is a, you know, prominent person within the time that she was in. And, um, they have a whirlwind of a romance that ensues and some drama that ensues and so from the end of book one you have book two which carries on with the rest of the drama that takes place right and um I don't want to read the back just because there's so much but this one really focuses on the marriage and the relationship between the two of them as well as some other things that take place place and I'm gonna just say Nehemiah always had some great stuff to say I don't think like you can see the green tabs but the first book I think had a lot more green tabs um in it and I think Artaxerxes is the king at the time in this let me see if I can see yeah Artaxerxes um was the king at the at that time and so um yeah I I really and yes okay it is Nehemiah cool Nehemiah so yeah I really would recommend if you guys are looking for something um following the you know the time of Nehemiah definitely check out the Harvest of Ruby's duology is amazing five both books were five stars for me it's comical it's romantic but it also has those serious notes um that I really enjoyed and so yeah we have that and so from this I'm actually gonna take the colors these colors here and my next book is going to be Iscariot by Miss Toscali. Now Toscali is another author I have been enjoying. I have read all of her biblical fictions and one of her thrillers which was Demon. I need to actually read some more of her books but um yeah Iscariot is basically the story of Judas Iscariot prior to him meeting Jesus, when he met Jesus, up to when he betrayed Jesus, and when he committed his suicide. And um, this was a fun read. I thought it was really interesting to see what could have been for Judas outside of what we see in scripture. I think Tosca did such a great job of um, creating the character of Judas and creating um, a person that is someone you can kind of relate to and probably like feel in person but also keep it to the scripture that is given um Tosca does a great job great job if you have not read Hava by her definitely read it Queen of Sheba was my least favorite book from her um this will be my second most likely and then uh Hava first like top tier Hava was amazing but that's not what I'm talking about we're talking about this and so um yeah it's basically the story of Judas I mean if you don't know who Judas is he was a betrayer of Jesus he betrayed Jesus was, was 20 or 30 shekels so you know he was like deuces jesus and, and sold him for some money and then killed himself at the end which was like what was the point what was the point but um yeah so we have this and so from this i'm taking the way he is standing kind of like his posture um with his face down and it being a man and i'm gonna go and pull the end of the magi by patrick w carr and so this book i gave four stars to i think i really wanted to enjoy this book but my major gripe with this book was that the last few chapters felt like the author threw scripture just to end the story and I can show you guys if you guys see all the purple tabs are literally at the end of the story it felt like you was just throwing scripture to complete the story which kind of bothered me um as a reader I wanted to fully immerse myself in the end right but it was just scripture 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 and it was like okay um where's the story going like what's going on however this story follows Myrad who was a magi acolyte and he basically was there the night that pretty much all of the magi were murdered they they were slaughtered they it was gruesome gritty gruesome disgusting murdered okay and he's basically on the run for his life and um he is also disabled there is something wrong with his foot i can't remember what it is called if i can remember i'll put it on the screen um but it's, it was pretty typical back in the time when um some people were born with like something wrong with their foot or their ankle i can't remember because i've read a couple of books where main characters or secondary characters had this issue but um yeah my red meets a merchant named wallagash 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 and um a band of other interesting people and you know a journey ensues and this is pretty much a book about a journey um and the romances are in here but it's not heavy but i, I did enjoy the romances um i enjoyed the action yo my red was he was cake butt okay he was ready to throw down when he had to right and i really had a soft spot for my red like my heart swooned 
for him as a person for going through and dealing with the stuff that he was dealing with having to have witnessed what he had witnessed um and just just the suffering he went through crazy but um yeah so we have this right the end of the magi and so from this i'm actually taking this kind of view down here of like this land the city or whatever and so for that one we gonna go with travis thrasher's american omens um and you guys see the city view down here and i actually love this book this is a christian futuristic sci-fi dystopian novel right set in 2038 and um it's a lot going on it's a lot going on so there are people who are coming out to be christians who just happen to go missing and you have this person named the reckoner the reckoner right is it the reckoner <laughs> Yes, the Reckoner, who's basically come to wake up the people that are there and to bring them to an understanding of Christianity. And um, the Reckoner, for me, kind of was similar to, like, a blend of, like, Jesus as well as John the Baptist in the sense of how he moved and maneuvered um, in the world. And the main character's name is Cheyenne, right? Cheyenne Byrne, yeah. And she is a programmer for a company called Akatar, which is the world's top technology firm. But when her father converts to Christianity, he then suddenly goes missing without a trace. And, um, she then meets a bunch of people, a band of people, and they try, they basically have to figure things out, right? And so, um, yeah, this was actually really good. I enjoyed it. I was actually shocked by how much I enjoyed it. As you can see, I do have an art copy. I never went and got a finished copy, and I definitely want to get a finished copy of this and reread it. Um, but, you know, I had a few things that I marked up. I think I definitely would reread it differently now because the way I annotated in 2019 is complete. 2019 this came out? Yeah, 2019 is completely different to how I annotate now. Um, so, yeah, I definitely want to find a finished copy, get it, and reread it because I really, really enjoy this. Um, and so, yeah. And so, from this book, the final book, I'm going to pull in that kind of cityscape as well as a red. Um, and so, that's going to be Nancy Mayo's Nightfall, um, which is the first book in the Chronicle Files trilogy, which that trilogy is actually completed. Third and final book came out this year, and I'm actually in the middle of reading it. been reading it for like the past two months, but I'm going to start it over for my reading blog that's coming up soon. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so Nightfall follows Alex Donovan um and her working for the BAU and if you guys are looking for anything similar to Criminal Minds Nancy's writing yo read the Kaylee Quinn Profiler trilogy that trilogy right there Mind Games um is the first book five star five star definitely gives the BAU vibes but we have Alex Donovan in this book and um this book I gave four stars to I really wasn't a fan of Alex Donovan as a character I think I preferred the male interest rather than her um what was it logan logan yeah logan was his name um so basically this basically follows alex Donovan, who becomes you know a part of the bau at the fbi um in missouri sorry authorities in missouri contact them about bodies found on a freight train and all killed in the same way but now alex has to confront her past and her new job and she immediately recognizes the graffiti messages the killer is leaving on the train cars so um yeah the the person is called the train man and she pretty much has to figure out who it is and what it is and it brings her back to her life but um i didn't really like i said i didn't care for her i couldn't connect with her she just felt like a whiny baby to me and she annoyed me so um yeah i gave this like a four star rating so that is my final book okay and so that is it for this telephone book tag i tag anybody who is watching this video i don't care who you are if you got books and you want to do this tag whether you have fiction books or non-fiction books I tag you to do this tag and when you do it please let me know so that I can see your video but um yeah I really had fun doing this tag I thought it was really really fun to do I probably will do more tags on this channel um because y'all know I have a lot a, a lot of books right a lot and so um yeah I want to thank Chrissy for even doing the tag and me finding her video um I actually found that video from watching her video about her Christian fantasy sci-fi recommendations which that video got me so many books to read but um yeah that is it so i'm gonna go again all the links down below are for any book blogs that i did like reading blogs sorry guys my brain just went left but for any reading blogs that i did down below and um that is it so i'll see you guys in the next video bye